Hello, all the lovely people. I hope you all are having a great time at this three days, twenty four seven seminar organized just for you. This is world's largest entrepreneurial summit by the entrepreneurs for the entrepreneurs like you. Thai Global Summit 2020 welcomes you all once again. We have another very interesting session beginning here. But before it begins, I would like to request all the full access participants to kindly log on to matchmaking software, complete your profile, and schedule meetings with fellow participants. Artificial intelligence powered matchmaking engine will recommend you suitable attendees to schedule your meetings. How interesting is that? Coming back to the session that we all are here for, uh, the name of the session is Thai India Advisor Program, and we have some very interesting speakers who are here joining us right from California, Silicon Valley. We have with us Mr. Venkatesh Shukla, General Partner in Monta Vista Capital, a former chair Thai Global. Thank you so much, Mr. Venkatesh Shukla, for joining us here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you all for participating in this uh, in, in this program. I like to introduce before I go further. I like to introduce my co-panelists here, uh, Anjali Joshi. Anjali is uh, you know has been in Google for a long, long time. Uh, was in Google for a very long time, and she was uh, you know as a vice president, she headed a lot of important initiatives. Some of them had to do with India, and when when time comes, we will discuss that also. uh but uh, so welcome anjali thank you uh and anjali <laughs> has uh, since left google and now she sits on some public company boards she is also advises startups and she is uh, conducting some uh, product management courses for indian entrepreneurs and at some point we'll get to talk about that also but uh, let's just uh, let me just tell you why uh what this program is and why we are talking to you guys so uh you know so some of us in in silicon valley uh you know we are motiv we are motivated by our desire to help uh, india and our desire to help indian startups become globally successful powerhouses and the model that we have in mind is really what israel has been able to accomplish you know over the last 20 years about 250 israeli companies have gone public on in indian in american stock markets and many hundreds of them have been acquired by us companies now mind you israel has a population of 8 million we are 1.2 billion and uh, there is no reason and the quality of talent in india and ambition and entrepreneurship indians are no less than anyone any other people in the world so how come that we don't see a, a success on a similar or even a bigger scale than what israel is has been able to do and that's what got uh, some of us together and we started brainstorming on what we could do to uh, to help this situation and that's how this program came together we are calling it thai india advisors so thai silicon valley is a thai silicon valley initiative in which you see we had we reached out to a, a large number of uh, of people who are very successful people here uh, who are similarly motivated to help uh, you know startups in india so that's how that's why it's called thai india advisors and essentially we'll have a chance to talk more about it and uh, you know our q and a session is see if we get to that otherwise we'll give you some more detail but basically the idea is that we have assembled to see about 15 you know a group of uh, 15 very successful uh, entrepreneurs and executives from silicon valley who are willing you see to spend their time helping uh, you know a few startups in india uh with what uh, with an area of uh, you know where they need most help whether it is in uh, scaling uh, uh, sales scaling whether it's product management whether it's engineering management fundraising or uh, or just go to market so so our advisors see cover the the entire 
you know, spectrum of skills that are needed, you see, for a startup to scale globally. Uh, Anjali, anything else that you want to add here? No, I think this is great. Um, uh, why don't I uh, talk a little bit about my observations uh, uh, over the last uh, year advising companies in India? So, um, of course, as Venk said, I spent uh, several years at uh, Google and many of those uh, years were spent working with the India team and building products for India. And uh, these were major products like Maps and, uh, of course, you know, optimizing search for India and various other products uh, that were based uh, in India for India. And what occurred to me over the last year is that all of the teams over there, the product teams as well as the engineering teams, were all uh, uh, Indian graduates. They were uh, from colleges, engineering colleges in India, from business management colleges in India. And, and uh, one of the reasons that these products were successful is that uh, we had learned a lot of methods on how to build excellent products from working at Google in the US and many and actually all of those practices were then transferred to India with unique observations about Indian users and what products would be successful in India. And combining those two things, we were able to launch uh, products that were first very, very uh, usable by Indian users. And then of course, you know, um, based on that, very successful. And in the recent years, if you have seen the success of Google Pay, which was initially called Taze, if you think about it, the product was actually built in India and Singapore by Indian engineers and uh, product managers. And the reason the product in three years became so successful is because of the many practices that were used in building products, uh, global products that were applied to this product. And today it's one of the biggest uh, payment products in India. Um, the, and, and of course, you know, being the most recent one, that is a huge accomplishment. Um, what I observed is that a lot of us who have spent many years in Silicon Valley have had a lot of learnings. And these learnings have been layered over multiple decades, over multiple generations in uh, Silicon Valley, you know, uh, the initial company was like uh, companies like Fairchild Semiconductors and HP and initially, and then going on to Intel, Oracle, um, Cisco, and, you know, myriads of companies after that. And now, of course, you see, you know, the Sun Microsystems, Alta Vistas and Yahoo's, which led to Google. And then following that, there have been a number of SaaS companies, Atlassian's, uh, Slack's and Salesforce and so on. Each of these companies have built upon the learnings of the past. And there's been, uh, this thing just hasn't happened out of just nowhere. A lot of people have learned how to build products, how to build excellent engineer, uh, excellent engineering teams, how to scale. And all of these then lessons are being passed down to, uh, to the new entrepreneurs who are also coming out of these companies. So with this observation, it occurred to me is that, you know, the reason that Israel and China now are, are at the forefront of building products are because they have now inculcated many of these learnings into their product uh, building um, uh, methods. As well as uh, as well as organizations, and now they're building really successful products that are global. So, given that what Venk and I, as we were con uh, talking through this, we felt like there were so many successful Indians in the valley, and in India, we should be passing on these learnings to Indian entrepreneurs, so that in the next ten years, we see the next Google, we see the next TikTok, we see the next Salesforce, which is built in India for the world. So that was, that was our initial thinking and that's our ambition with this program. Um, the other thing that uh, Venk mentioned is, uh, is, is the product management course that we just, uh, we, we taught. It was done uh, for Sequoia and I noticed Sequoia is one of the, one of the uh, sponsors of this conference. It was done for uh, a number of surge Sequoia Surge participants. And we covered uh, a very formal product management and product uh, development methodology with them. And what we found was that uh, one, there was a great need for these types of uh, 
these types of uh, classes where we were teaching them formal methods and that the, the founders learned a lot and they were able to apply these practices into their into their companies so what we feel is that having launched this program entrepreneurs would benefit a lot um people here want to go back and the timing is right so that as these startups are taught how to scale are given the formal methodologies that people have learned over the years we will be able to encourage entrepreneurs to think big think scale and build global companies do you agree bank yeah yeah no i think uh, i think you know you you uh, you know i think uh, hopefully uh, we should get into discussing you see what are the common uh, you know uh, uh, shortcomings or perceptions are common is, is there is a, a common stream of uh, you know uh, behavior or uh, expertise that uh, the indian startups as generally uh, need from your interaction with startups so far i have my own but let's hear from you first so um, the areas where we felt that people could uh, use help is really formal methodologies in terms of how do you understand user needs how do you set up a product development process how do you communicate how do you set up launch processes how do you understand when you have product market fit and then once you have product market fit how to grow and scale and so there's an order to these things and some of sometimes what happens is because you have not been through the process once uh you don't quite know so a number of startups we felt were focusing on growth before they had product market fit and once we went through the process they realized that unless the users need your products and they love your products and there is virality you cannot even think about growth because that growth is very transient and there'll be a lot of churn and users won't stay that was one very important lesson that the founders pointed out to us that they learned from these uh, these classes another lesson was you know how do you uh, how do you build the right culture in the organization you know when when the vcs fund you you certainly have a lot of money on your hands and then you are off to building products but in order to build a company that is lasting and that can create a series of products and not just one you have to build in a culture of innovation and that was another lesson that they found really valuable is how have these companies all through the last five decades in silicon valley have had a consistent culture of innovation and of course it has evolved since technology has evolved and the people have changed and you know newer generations have brought in new ideas and new methods of doing things but what has been at the forefront of all of these companies minds is nurturing and fostering innovation so that newer and better products can be built in the market and we've seen that year over year i mean apple every year comes up with new new completely new paradigms we see google we see facebook we see now the smaller companies coming up with all kinds of new paradigms and ways of doing things and that has what has uh, led to this silicon valley innovation flywheel and we'd like to help uh, entrepreneurs in india build this kind of an innovation flywheel in india build products in india which then you know not just are useful for india but are useful for uh, the global population yeah yeah you know i think uh, so you brought out to see one very interesting is a point uh, the other thing that is i saw uh, and let me just give some background on this about 3 4 years ago we had launched a, a program called billion dollar babies uh, which was not as ambitious in its scope uh, it was not scaled as as well it was just a effort to see of two or three individuals here uh, and the thing that as we started interacting with the startups in india and the thing that struck uh, us the most was uh, you know it's like if if i if i were to take a sort of analogy it's like uh, you know a, a banyan tree uh, the indian startups as here you know tend to be uh, like banyan tree whereas the successful startups here are like uh, you know redwood trees which are Uh, narrow and tall they go they go much taller uh, banyan trees covers a lot of area but doesn't grow as tall and the point was that 
that uh, the successful startups globally are the ones which do one thing and one thing extremely well, better than anybody else. They don't try to be many things to many people and they don't, uh, you know, there's a, always pressure in India from customers to do, hey, can you do this also? Can you do this also? If you add this feature, I'll, I'll get rid of this other thing that you say I'm doing and stuff like that. So, and that, uh, you know, that may get you initial success in India, but that's, but that success comes at a cost. And the cost is that when you take that product to see outside of India, uh, you know, people do not value all the other things that you have put together because there are, you know, people are used to accepting best of the breed from, um, you know, from, uh, from startups. So I, I wonder if you ran into some of that, say, Anjali. So one of the things I would say is that uh, uh, what I did f find very, very interesting is that the Indian environment is quite different. And uh, sometimes, you know, when you get into thinking of uh, building products that are uh, would be successful globally, you get into two traps. One is that you, you don't... Uh, deeply understand the users in your own markets and you of course you, you don't deeply understand users in other markets and you uh, kind of don't focus on what you what, what the problem is that you want to solve so uh, what are my experience building products in india let's say let's take maps was that uh, you know there were some very particular uh, uh, differences in how navigation happened in India. For instance, you didn't have street names, you didn't have organized streets, so you had to navigate using landmarks. And that was a very important feature to launch. The second uh, thing that I noticed which was different launching products in India was that, uh, you know, uh, connectivity wasn't great. So you had to launch that products that were offline. I'll give you an example from Uber. You know, when I uh, got out of the airport at the airport in Bangalore, you had to go to a spot to actually get an Uber instead of having Uber come and pick you at the airport. The point was that there was these very interesting features that were built for India that became uh, very, very popular in 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 the whole world because you know Uber then started you know putting Uber pickup stops outside of airports, you know, across the world, in Europe, in, in the US and everywhere else, the offline feature of maps was used, you know, in when you went to state parks where there was no coverage or in rural areas where the coverage was limited, you could use the same features. Same, same goes for, you know, navigation directions is that turn right at the bank because sometimes the signs weren't visible and they, it was in Europe, that's also fairly common. My point here to summarize is that there are features Features that when you build them for India end up being applicable for the globe. So you need to pay very, very deep attention to user needs and solving user problems because those are user problems that are that are uh, prevalent across the globe and you, they're not prevalent as often in other other areas perhaps, but they also give you an edge when you when you build a product. I mean, we think about WeChat and WeChat came up and, and, and became a platform and this whole concept of a super app and a platform actually has come out of China. So it's not so much, you know, one one thing and then WeChat sort of, you know, got the user and said, how much can, how many activities can the user do on WeChat? And then the whole world started thinking about, you know, super apps and how do we build a super app? And now everybody wants to build a super app and they're still kind of struggling. And of course, you know, WhatsApp has come along and the first place that it took off was in India. So pay close attention to the users in India because the learning lessons from that will be applicable to the globe. Yeah, well, it's interesting, right? Because you often hear uh, when you go to India that US builds product, see, for the first billion, uh, the richest billion uh, people in the world, but India will build product for the remaining 6 billion people of the world. And yes, they should. Uh, and, and the example that you gave, you see, with OffMap and Uber and stuff, you see, sort of reinforce that point. And, and China, I mean, you see the applications coming out of China. I mean, China built TikTok and that has become, it's, it's become this political thing 
I mean, can you imagine that an app that children use to post funny videos and all that now is now being discussed in in at the highest levels of government and so on. And and that to me is resounding success. If you can build an app in five years that causes conversation uh, at that level, you've obviously achieved something. And you know, our goal through this program is to ensure that. Of course, you know, you don't want to get into controversy and all of that, but we can also help you navigate the controversies because we've all faced them in our career. You know, we 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 have we understand privacy, we understand security, we understand the kind of features that are, you know, lead to questions about bias and things like that. And some of this guidance comes, as I would say, from experience, from having done this, from having made mistakes and from having learned. And the point here is that these advisors are all uh, very experienced. They've all made these mistakes and we want to help the Indian startups avoid these mistakes, perhaps make uh, they make other ones, but we are also have the experience to navigate some of these and then help them scale and grow faster than other companies have. And that's our goal here. And any lessons from billion dollar babies, uh, uh, Venk, that you know, we any successes, any success stories that you can talk about that are some good examples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, at that time, as I said, it was a it was done at a much more modest scale. Uh, we picked four companies at that time. One of them, of course, you see, is a, a is a unicorn now. Uh, everybody knows about it, called Druva. Uh, so that was one of our companies in our program. The second company in the program was Seclor. And they decided, you see, to, you know, they, they benefited so much. Uh, and they came to the realization is that their market is global. They, they're all B2B companies. If the market is global, they have to be, they have to succeed, you see, in USA. So the founder decided to relocate to Silicon Valley. He's based here now. And I think now his, I think his revenues are north of about 30, 40 million. So he has done very well. The third company got, got acquired. So, so three out of four, uh, the fourth company dropped out of the program. So three out of four is he had, had a tremendous success. So I think, the, I think the, the biggest learning was that all these founders really, really appreciated the insights they were getting from advisors here. Their challenge was that they were too busy fighting fires all the time. So there are things that are important and there are things that are urgent. And I think uh, the sign of, a, sign of a good entrepreneur is, how do you balance what is urgent with what is important? And is that kind of a balance would, would, uh, you know, would enable them to derive the maximum benefit from the expertise of the people here? Because as a startup, you know, you, there are always things to do. There are always hundred things to do and that you could never get around to doing it. Even if you spend 24 hours of the day, seven days a week doing that. So having that kind of a judgment as to when is it to, you know, switch from uh, tackling urgent things to tackling important things, that what is, you know, the dis differentiated, you see, very successful entrepreneurs from others. So uh, you point you you bring up great examples, and today there are like twenty one uh, unicorns in India. Maybe a few more have been added. Um, this is this is this number is is great, but it needs to grow a lot. And uh, this uh, audience of and entrepreneurs are the people who are going to create you know hundreds of unicorns in India, and we are here to support you in that journey. So that's that's kind of where where we want to. Uh, uh, leave it with this program. If the if the audience has questions, could you enter them in the chat and we can address them? Or maybe um, I think after that we can talk a little bit more about the details of the program. Yeah, and in fact, you know, like you brought about advisors. It, this might be a good time to uh, to show uh, you know the group. You see who the advisors are, and you know, just talk briefly about them, about ones that you know, Anjali, and the ones that I know. So mm -hmm. let me let me just try to put uh, uh, share the screen. You see, with that particular page from from Thai. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I would add is that this is just our initial set of advisors. I mean, there are many, many people in the Valley who want to help, and we are also just getting started. So as we um, 
grow this program as we get more entrepreneurs and startups uh, to this program. There are a number of people who have reached out to be advisors. So um, we have, uh, let me just, uh, so here's the here's our page uh, where you can get more information about this program. Um, I think if you could scroll down to, uh, um, here are the program details. Uh, we are on the committee, Venk and I on the committee along with Yash Mark and AGK, who's uh, the head of Thai Silicon Valley. We have a set of advisors over here from all sorts of companies. They cover areas of engineering, product management, uh, uh, marketing, sales, operations. And we have a whole uh, a set of luminaries from the Valley who are interested in helping startups. So, and this so is Anjali, this is just Anjali, a sampling. Anjali, yeah. why did you talk about one or two people that you know here uh, about yeah, yeah. what the background is? Let me talk about Prem since he has just been projected on the screen and he was also my uh, uh, co-teacher in this and the, on the class that we taught to the search team. Prem uh, was a uh, was a Google uh, um, uh, product manager for a long time. He has a MBA from Harvard Business School. He's worked in India on the Internet Bus project and various other projects, and is now the head of product at Sidewalk Labs, which does urban planning. Um, Meenal Mehta and I actually also worked together at Google, and she was. Uh, um, working on building products for emerging markets in the Google Next Billion, uh, Next Billion User Initiative and is now head of uh, emerging market products at YouTube. You want to talk about a couple, Wink? Um, yeah, yeah. Let me talk about uh, another person who is, who is here, uh, uh, Mithul. Uh, Mithul Tiwari, he was a, you know, started his career he, uh, with uh, Cosmix, uh, which was acquired by Walmart, then worked in LinkedIn. And then he started his own uh, own company called Passage.ai. It was a conversational AI uh, company that got acquired by ServiceNow. So now he is uh, managing the same project you see in ServiceNow. So his background is his background is engineering engineering management, uh, uh, you know, kind of thing. The other person here is uh, Ranjan Nag. Uh, Ranjan is a has been a serial entrepreneur and he sold one company to Motorola, another company to BlackBerry, but now he's very active investor in, uh, and a professor actually, a teacher is he in artificial intelligence at Stanford University. But uh, his passion really is, is working you see, with uh, entrepreneurs and he is a very good resource for, uh, for not just thinking about, not just how to go about fundraising, but also how to go about you know, uh, you know, converting good technical ideas into, uh, you know, into products and how to do uh, fundraising and how to so do the product market fit. Those are the kind of things which typically when you are, when you are young, when you're not young, when your company is young and you're starting with, you know, he has done it so many times over and over again. He, you know, he'd be a great guy. Some, some other people that uh, that maybe I want to, you know, kind of highlight here is uh, is 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 Narayan. Narayan, you see, was uh, McKinsey. Then you see, he was head of uh, e-commerce at Disney, and then he became head of digital commerce. You see, at another Fortune 500 company here, and now uh, he has just left all of them. He is uh, just helping startups. So you know, this is the kind of caliber of people, uh, you know, who are, you know, some of the best in the world that have come together, you see, to, uh, to help, uh, you know, uh, startups in India. So that gives you some flavor, you see, of what kind of talent that exists, you see, among the advisors here. And this is just the beginning. What we are trying to do is, uh, once we have the program off the ground, and you know, over the next several years, there will there are clearly going to be a bunch of other advisors who are going to join as well. So, all of their bios and their LinkedIn um, profiles are on the on the Thai advisor page. So, find someone who's suitable for you. Reach out to us. Use the application process, and then. Uh, um, we can take it from there. We as a team meet every week to evaluate the applications, connect them with the right advisors, and uh, and uh, and hopefully then that goes on to build a successful relationship between the advisor and uh, and and the company, and that leads to success. 
So and uh, if they are not, then I guess you see we are pretty much done here, Anjali. Yes, I think that's that's great. We hope that uh, people have watched this session. They will do the survey and they will then apply uh, for uh, mentors and advisors on our oh, yeah. uh, program page. Okay, we need, so the survey, right? Uh, can you talk about the survey? Um, and this might be a good time for them to send out the survey, right? Yes, I think this is a great time to send out a survey. Please fill out the survey. We'd like to get to know you better and uh, and then uh, reach out to you. Oh, they have two questions, okay? All right. Okay, let's take those questions. Where are those questions? How do you know that they have? Uh, Gayatri on the on chat said that there are two questions. So Gayatri, could you? Uh, um, thanks, Gayatri. The question is they want to know more about uh, us, our and our achievements. And uh, I guess instead of uh, talking about them here, maybe what you might want to do is go into our LinkedIn profiles, and uh, you will see what our uh, careers have been. And. Uh, um, you know, <laughs> it's a it's a it's a long thing both for Venk and me who've been in this industry for a while. I mean, I have I've been at Bell Labs, I've been at a startup, I've been at Google, I've worked with uh, Reliance uh, in India for a bit, and uh, there's uh, uh, a a lot of things that uh, that have uh, uh, been done through this long career. So I'd uh, I'd ask you to look at LinkedIn and please reach out to me. I'd be happy to connect with you, Venk. Well, uh, yeah, you know, I think I've been in Silicon Valley for a long time. Uh, you know, initially started, my claim to fame was that, uh, uh, that I was one of the first Indian to rise up, uh, you know, to, uh, from the sales and marketing route uh, to be, uh, you know, the vice president of a Fortune 500 company, but I'm dating myself now. Indian CCR, you know, are so successful everywhere. Uh, then after that, I went to num I did number of startups. Uh, some of them were very successful, and the rest of them were, as Silicon Valley calls them, valuable learning experiences. Uh, <laughs> we never call them failures. And uh, and then I, I, I accumulated all that experience to start a, a venture fund, which is uh, you know basically uses that experience to guide uh, you know younger entrepreneurs. So that's my history. And along the way, I got involved with Thai, uh, became president of Thai Silicon Valley and chair of Thai Global. And uh, the, the funnest uh, part of that experience was that I had an opportunity to host the prime minister of India. Uh, we invited him to Silicon Valley and I hosted him here for two days. And that was, that was the fun part of my the journey uh, with Thai. So, uh, so I guess, uh, and I just, you know, for the rest is you can go to my LinkedIn. That's that's all the questions. So thank you very much for joining. I hope you got enough information about the Thai Advisor Program. And uh, for more details, please go to the page and reach out to us. Thank you for coming. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.